Okay. Gotta get this mic correct. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, more paper tests. <clears throat> hey, ED, it's good to see you, man. Hey, Pippi Pop, I'm Rudak, Keith. Crew's showing up. I got um, new paper <clears throat> to try out. I think this is the priciest stuff that I have tried out of everything. <clears throat> oh, hey, Michael. Hey, Stacy. Oh, man, everything is pretty amazing with me. We went and bought a new car this week, and um, it's been super stressful, but um, it's pretty extraordinary to have a new car. I haven't had a... I haven't bought a car in 20 years, so it's um, few and far between for me. For an American, anyway. <laughs> Thanks. I got um, a, a Chevy Bolt, uh, all EV car, which is to replace my old um, hybrid that we've been driving for years and years and years. Oh, nice. You finally got the Harrow County Library editions. Man, I wish they could get those back into print. That's It's such a bummer that they're so hard to find. Yeah, this is, yeah, Stacy, the car buying is like weird. It wasn't it wasn't as bad as I um feared it would be, but it was just like just took forever. It's just so funny. You got like the place had the price. They like financed me at the interest rate I wanted. And then it was still like five hours of sort of sitting around and waiting for stuff. Who knows what's going on? All right, so let's tear into this. I actually got this. This showed up at the start of the week, but I was so busy with all my other stuff that I haven't even opened it yet. So we get to do a whole unboxing. Yeah, Keith, that's a, it's definitely a challenge. Like I think even, like we hardly drive anywhere and I think it's still gonna be a little bit of a challenge. And you know, we still have to wait for, to get our charger installed at the house and stuff. But um, the car we got has a range of 250 miles on a single charge. And once we have the, um, the 240 volt charging um, on the house, I, we should be able to charge that overnight, which is pretty great. Yes, Michael, there are Harrow County Library Editions. There's four regular Harrow County Editions and then a fifth Tales of Harrow County Library Edition. <laughs> yeah, Keith, I've, I've actually watched, um, doing some research, I watched some videos about people who like chronicle their, their road trips in an EV. And it doesn't, it's definitely not as easy as going in a gas car, but um, also doesn't seem quite as hard as a lot of people make it out to be. It is, it's just like instead of like your, your, uh, when you stop for gas, instead of stopping for 15 minutes, you stop for an hour, you know, that kind of thing. Interesting. Already, like this paper is not what I expected. So this is the um, oh, this is the cold press. 
Oh shit, did I order the wrong thing? I meant to order the hot press, so it would be um, smooth. And of course there's no way to show it on the camera, but it is, well, it shows up a tiny bit. It is a little bit textured. Like if I kill this light, can I get a glancing angle? No, won't show up. I got, ED asked what color did I get? It, um, we kind of didn't care about the color. They actually had to go get the car from a place a couple hundred miles away for us. But it was, um, it's like this light gray with a little bit of like a pearlescent stuff going on. It's pretty, it looks nice. Keith, it kind of, about stopping more often, it kind of depends, I think, on um, how far you're trying to go in one day and like stuff like that. So, like I said, our car has a range of about 250 miles. So typically you would want to like stop every, you know, 150 miles probably and top it off. <laughs> yeah, we got some tooth, Michael. All right, it's on a block. I'm not a big fan of watercolor blocks. I always feel like whenever you go to separate them, it you end up, or at least I end up, scarring the paper underneath. Let me see what I got. I have a kind of a clean palette knife. I'm going to go ahead and pull the page off. Man, I wish I had gotten the hot press. This stuff um, was pricey. It was 50 bucks for the pad of 20 sheets, which is like, I think this is probably the most expensive paper um, I have in the house. And it's, I'm gonna cut this in half. It's 12 by 18, which is cool because like the original size that I usually work at is um, 11 by 17. So it's like off the pad, it's exactly the right, like it's perfect size. I might not even trim it down at that. Well, it's not exactly 11 by or 12 by 18, is it? So I think the very first thing to do is to go straight to the tape test because that's, um, if you go too long before that, it's always a huge disappointment if it fails. Yeah, Michael, I would hope it passes the tape test too. I have 
been very surprised sometimes. Although this paper feels like, feels very tough. My friend um, Shell Kahn was just telling me on Instagram that um, this paper is really good for um, very wet applications. Which it kind of feels like, it's got like a very sandpapery feel to it. Like, there's the regular like paper texture, which is just the tiniest bit lumpy, but then there's like a finer, like super, almost grainy feel to it. It's very interesting. It's not super thick, Pippi Pop. It's like um, like my uh, the Strathmore paper that I usually use, the mixed media paper, is quite a bit thicker than this, actually. So we take this and we'll I'm going to go ahead and do a little pre-tape test. Yeah, that came off perfect. We'll see though. Once you get it, when you get the paper wet, sometimes it changes that uh, the tape dynamic quite a bit. Michael, I don't know. It depends on, it always depends on the sizing, I think. Like whatever glue they use in the paper, that's going to affect the absorption more than anything else, I think. Any drawing tips on plotting out the scale on a snake that is twisting itself, raising up? It's hurting my brain. Yeah, Rudek, that's a tough one. I have had to do that a couple times. Um, just real quick, where's a scrap piece of paper? How do I not have a scrap piece of paper except the super expensive stuff? Okay. Here's my snake scale thing. You have a snake that's doing this or whatever. You do... Uh, crisscross pattern. So you work out kind of a bunch like this. And then you do the opposite. And you can see they kind of are tighter on the inside of the curve. And then looser on the outside. And then you have a foundation for your scales where you can be like scale, scale. Just put a scale in each one of those little diamond areas. At least that's how I did it when I was doing a ton of uh, snakes in Harrow County. And it worked all right, you know, when you, especially if you um, like sort of cover up your mistakes with the overall rendering of the of the body shape. That works really good. What should I do? What should I draw? I hadn't even thought about that. I was just so excited to get into this paper. Um <laughs> I think a lot of this sort of stuff I got from my video game days trying to figure out how to map textures onto 3D models and stuff I think uh, helps me figure out some of this stuff. Reservoir Dogs. Give me something I don't have to look up reference for. Stand by me. That's more reference. <laughs> What's something kind of generic? Have you ever done anywhere you, any where the wild things are? I 
did a long time ago. We did, um, I think I did. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might be wrong. In, um, <laughs> self-portrait. Oof. I think I'm going to go with um, something very generic. Maybe I'll, I was thinking maybe I'd do a zombie, but maybe I should do, maybe I'll do like, a, no, let's do um, the classic like death skeleton. That'll be fine. Oh, Ghost Rider. There we go. That's a skeleton. Anyway, those are always fun. Oh, already this is very, let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, the texture on this paper is very strange. I know, is the mic picking up that noise? Yeah, ED, that's like, it does sound kind of like nibs. <laughs> Preteen girl giggles. That's pretty much what it sounds like, actually. This paper sounds exactly like, like tweens. I don't remember exactly what it looks like, but I'm going to try to make up a cosmic Ghost Rider. I always thought he was very cool. Am I, do I keep blocking the camera too much? <laughs> Ma in the other room is telling me yes, I'm blocking the camera too much. Here's something I've seen a lot of people do that I never do, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to take my kneaded eraser here, this guy, and see, it's not really doing nothing. It's not like flat enough, I don't think.
Oh, Kelly, I didn't even see you come in. How you doing? kind of interesting it kind of I don't know I think the idea with it is that it's supposed to erase a little bit kind of erased a little more than I expected but whatevs Oh, hey, Evie. <laughs> Doesn't smell too funny. Like, the eraser does smell. Has that weird rubber smell. But, um... Doesn't seem to be transferring too much. that stuff was running too much that's the advantage of having I don't know if you can even see it um, having a desk that you can change the angle on real easy So I'm going to try to do what everyone says is the advantage of this paper, that you can work very wet on it. So I'm going to try to do some big sloppy washes. That is wrecking all my yellow. So let's see if I can get it back in a minute here. I think I can, if I can get my brush clean enough, I think I can come in here. Kind of push the stuff out of there.
seems to be taking these wet washes pretty good. I am going to have to clean this up because if his head's going to be glowy, the screen's going to fight it way too much. I need to keep it as yellow and red as I can. So I think I'll have to come back with the more yellow. Well, this paper's getting pretty wrinkly, like more wrinkly than I kind of want it to be. Like I'm, I get the feeling that it will flatten out, but it might take, like with my mixed media paper, it'll flatten out with the airbrush after just a second, but this seems like it might take a lot longer. I did screw around with my camera a little bit this week and I got a little bit more accurate color but it's still a little bit like I might have overdone it it might be a little bit too um, muted now it was way too glowy before to my eye this yellow looks a little bit brighter than on the screen but I'm sure everyone's television is set or everyone's phone or whatever you're watching this on is all set different Oh, hey Mark, you just saw the boy and the heron. I need to, um, I have not even watched any trailers for that to see, like, what's up. There might not even be trailers out for that, right? It might, there's something about them not doing any, like, pre-marketing stuff for it or something, I don't know. Do you find that tape is enough to keep the paper from warping or do you typically stretch your paper with washes too? 
Um, I find that the tape doesn't help with warping, like, at all, really. It's all, um, like, the warping comes because the bottom of the paper is dry and the top of the paper gets wet, and so the top expands while the bottom stays tight or whatever. So the best way to avoid warping, I think, is to wet both sides of the paper, and I think that'll do it. Um, I mostly tape it off because um, it makes it easier to spin. Like if I tape it to my um, my foam core board here, it makes it real easy to spin the page around to get different hand angles. And then, um, and then I also tape it down because it gives that really beautiful edge that is very satisfying. Like it always makes the piece feel more finished when it has that clean edge to it, I think. So yeah, the paper warping, like basically what what what'll happen is it'll warp really bad, like with high with high quality paper, it'll warp sometimes really bad when you're working on it, but by the time it all dries, um, it should flatten out again, regardless of the tape situation. <laughs> this stage right here is my favorite part right before the image starts to get defined like seeing an image in the fog and it gets clear the closer you get yeah I agree with you ED it's like um, you can kind of start to see where it where it can go but um, it could go anywhere now it could still completely go off the rails Oh, this is still wet. I thought this was drier than it is. I'm going to have to hair dry again. There's probably a term for this, but the, what I do like about this paper is that there's something very satisfying the way the, about the way the paint sort of grips to the surface. There's some very nice, like, hard edges um, that are very satisfying. They look very beautiful. Yeah, it's something you can't really, like, high-quality watercolor paper can do that in a way nothing else can. <laughs> Somehow you're way behind on the stream. Stream's got to go pretty far to find you, Mark. Oh, subbed or dubbed? That's a good question, Michael. Subtitling is like hit or miss for me, especially with animation. Like when something is sort of a visual feast. It can be really distracting when I have to read about it and I can't I can't afford to look at everything all the time. Which is a funny way to say that, but you know what I mean.
Hey, Bo. The thing that I wish somebody would sit down and subtitle for me is um, um, that Mon Ben show from Japan. That show is so great, and it would be so fun to be able to s like have it on while I'm working. But because it's subtitled, you have to look at it to know what the heck anyone's saying. Oh, Godzilla minus one. Yeah, a lot of people seem to really, really love that. Yeah, Rudek, you know, um, they're all on, on YouTube now, basically. Like, they're just all over the place. But they're all still subtitled. Like, I still would love a dub of that. Oh, there were ED? There were dubbed versions? Every time I talk to um, anyone in manga publishing, I'm telling them, I tell them they need to do a dubbed version. Like, I would buy those on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever if they were available. There are dubbed versions on the NHK app. Oh. I'll have to look that up. Um, it's called uh, Man Ben, 
M-A-N-B-E-N. Yeah, it's done by Urasawa. So it's like, um, it's like comics pros talking to comics pros kind of a thing. Yeah, man, I let that green get into this area, and now, like, I'll never get it, like, a bright yellow again. It's a little bit brighter in real life than it is on screen, but, like I said, but it's, um, not as glowy as I want it to be. Trying to get a little bit of Kirby crackle in here. Have a good night, Michael. I am loving this little piece down here where I have some paper peeking out. Kind of nice. I like that. That light highlight there.
Thanks, Rudak. It is it's coming together okay. Especially for something that I had zero plan for. Oh, you just saw Hellboy 2019. I have not seen the last two Hellboys. Definitely need to. So the thing that's like, like I kind of have this highlight up here, but it feels like, like this paper really wants to the whites to be um, the paper instead of gouache. I'm going to try going over with gouache to do a highlight on here just to see how it looks, but it kind of doesn't, it doesn't feel like that's what it wants to do. But first I'm going to do some outer space. Watched it twice, the Hellboy 2019, it got better each time. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, Mark, that's an interesting thing about Hellboy as a movie that like, I don't think... Even uh, Del Toro didn't quite seem to really get that um, that the thing that's really cool about the comics is how quiet they are, you know? They're sort of remarkably... Um, strangely and remarkably quiet comics. Even, like, the big action-adventure moments sort of feel quiet compared to um you know like a, a manga or something
I think that's a good point, Mark, about the Green Knight. That definitely has the vibe. It's the kind of story where it goes great distances, but like by the end of the story, it doesn't feel like it's really gone anywhere. <laughs> committee of normals. You are being called before the committee of normals. Yeah, Ron Perlman's really got the Hellboy vibe. Yeah, Edie, that's like... Hellboy is such a strange comic, and I'm so, like, grateful that it exists. Because, like, it would be a really hard pitch if nobody... I've, I've said this a million times, but if, like, nobody knew who Mike Mignola was, and he showed up today and tried to sell you Hellboy, I think people would be like, what are you trying to show me? And it would take a while for people to get it. But because he sort of, like, grew into his Hellboy-ness and into his own mignola -ness. and we got to like go along, like it really, um, really makes his super weird comic feel like just perfect. The Del Toro Hellboys were fine, I think. They're a little too silly for me. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I think the next step on this guy is to try some of my acrylic ink on it and see how it goes on this paper. Oh, Keith, I don't I don't know if I've really noticed his voice on the new game. I don't know if I can actually play the game on any of the devices I have. Oh, hey, um, don't forget to like the video, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. I love drawing a good skull. Okay, where to start on this guy? I guess down here. I don't know how much I want to ink the skull itself. I might just ink the glass and leave it at that. But this is like... The goal of this is to test this paper. It's not necessarily to make a great drawing or nothing. Interesting, the, the toothiness of this paper feels like it pulls the ink off the brush faster than I want it to. Like my brush dries up really quick.
<laughs> I'm always trying to do, do balls, Keith, but you never know. Sometimes I, especially for the live stream, I try to set my my um, goals low so that I can be pleasantly surprised. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in. going to go do a little bit of nib stuff on the skull. Just a touch. Kind of like the way the nib works on this paper. It's sometimes on watercolor paper, the nib stuff tends to bleed more.
Hey Comic Shropes, uh, this is a uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Kind of done from memory, so it's probably not like on the money. For I don't know, I don't even actually know who designed Cosmic Ghost Monster. Ghost Monster. <laughs> Ghost Rider. Hey Shell. Thanks for stopping by. This is that paper. Yeah, for those just joining us, we're testing this stuff. Fabriano, the cold press. And it is nice. I actually, I was trying to buy the hot press and accidentally bought the wrong thing, so. Um, I might have to do another test in a couple of weeks. But man, I would <laughs> I don't want to buy another pad of $50 paper. Buying that car has got me like all uh, gun shy about spending money. I got a uh, a Chevy Bolt, twenty twenty three. Uh, what do they call it? The, like the cheapest one, basically. The as far as I I know, it's the cheapest uh, electric car in America. The Bolt with a B, which is very funny name to me. Like I think it's supposed to sound like it's a bolt of lightning, but to me, I just picture like a a bolt, like a nuts and bolts. That's good to hear, comic tropes. Yeah, I um, our uh, we were we drove our Honda Civic Hybrid into the dirt, and it finally, finally gave up the ghost recently. And um, like it needed all new catalytic converters, and um, and the hybrid battery was dust. And so we decided it was just time to put that guy to rest. But our our Honda got 350,000 miles on it and um, we had that thing for 20 years and I like I think that um, especially we drove most of it in um, in California where gas is super expensive and I'm pretty sure that like driving a hybrid for 20 years um, paid for the car like the whole car, which is pretty amazing. I'm really hoping that having an electric car will kind of do the do the same. Not that we drive a lot anymore. Like we're like uh, just COVID has really turned us into homebodies, and we live in a town that's like super walkable too, which is nice. Yeah, no, pour one out for little Honda Civics, man. If Honda had a good EV out, like an affordable one, I, I would have um, jumped on that, I think. Just because I loved our, our Civic so much. But you know what? One of the funny things about like 
not buying a car for 20 years is like, like, so our car was a 2003 and, um, man, like new cars are like Star Trek. It's unbelievable. And this is the cheapest, uh, this is like the small, like cheapest package they sell the bolt in. And, um, it's got heated, uh, steering wheel and shit. Like so weird. <laughs> Man, I want to talk about cars all day, actually. I think Honda and Toyota want to make sure they put out something with great reliability and still kind of affordable. Yeah, that might be true. I heard that Toyota, like, until they changed, like, they changed CEOs recently, but they, um, like, the old guy um, was saying that they would never make an EV, which is kind of absurd, but... Every new car seems to have an iPad center console now. Yeah, I know, right? Like, that's so weird. And it's really nice. Like, I've been... We've had so many of those phone suction cup apparatuses stuck in our, our Civic. It's nice to not have to do that anymore. Having, like, CarPlay and stuff is wild. Oh, I was going to try a highlight. I think this might be kind of dust. Oh, there's a little bit of ink still in there. All right, the highlight's working out all right. I was saying earlier I was worried about what it would look like compared to the, the white of the paper, but um, yeah, it feels all right. Thanks, Comic Stropes. What doodad do you find most fascinating on your Star Trek car? Well, <laughs> my favorite thing about my Star Trek car is, and actually this is super Star Trek-y, because it's an EV, like, electric vehicles have a, a tone that they play when you, like, when you get in and you turn it on and you put it on, um, put it in reverse, it makes this, like, it almost sounds like a, a motor noise but it's like a little bit more of like a synthesizer noise it's incredible so it makes this just wonderful little noise when you do it it's so great that's my favorite thing so far I just got a new Corolla hybrid a seven-year-old Corolla was totaled while parked oh man had to wait a month for it to show up to the lot yeah using the tour of the console system was like now take out your phone download the app and pair it up <laughs> yeah no that um is a bummer that's one thing one thing about having an electric car that i so far i'm not enjoying at all is the the chargers like the public chargers are all um like app based like you can't just pull up to one and swipe your credit card it's like they all want to, they all want you to log in, and it sucks. Uh, 
Oh, comic strips. You say ask uh, white out or white paint. It's uh, F W ink. So um, it's an acrylic ink. It's not quite as opaque as a lot of the whiteouts, but um, but it's pretty opaque. I like it. Like a transformer noise. That would be sweet. That would be kind of sweet. Everybody needs us at the end app now to launch. It. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That sounds awful, Keith. Having an app to do the laundry is like. Ugh. I don't know. It's all just so gross. BMW is testing the idea of making all the vehicles have every option and then you use the app to turn them on and off features for monthly subscription prices. Gross. Yeah, no, that shit is nasty. Like, even my car has, like, an app to, like, remotely turn, turn it on and, like, check the battery status and stuff. And um, I think I have three years free with it, but... Um, Pretty sure we're gonna ditch it as soon as soon as um, we have to pay for it. I cannot um, cannot encourage that. You might be able to choose different noises. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. I've barely like dug into the menus. It's like, it's so funny to have so many settings. Then has that too, you can turn it on via phone and it alerts me if it's left unlocked. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's like in theory it's nice, but it also like, whenever I do it, it takes, you know, 20 seconds to actually connect to my car and it's like, I could have actually walked outside and just looked at my car by then. Did you intentionally choose the green and blue background to contrast against the warm head colors? That is exactly what I did. Yeah, I wanted, um, oh, wrong button. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted the head to feel very glowy, but it, um, doesn't look super glowy. I'm about to hit this with some airbrush though. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of black airbrush and um, push some of the darks back and I think it'll make the head pop out a little bit more. We'll see. And also this is mostly just a paper test. I'm just testing this Fabriano stuff and um, trying to run it through some paces. So far I actually do like it. Like I think I would like the hot press better but um, I do like what this is doing. And it's like, like I said a million times already, like it's a little bit brighter in real life. Like I tried adjusting the um, saturation on my camera a little bit and I think I overdid it. It's a little bit muted now. Can you jailbreak your car so you can just do more things that aren't recommended? I think you can. It'd be interesting to see, like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. The gradients you're getting are gorgeous. Thanks, Shell. I was actually, um, I took your comment to heart about how it was good with wet media, and I was like, I'm going to push it and see how good I can get. And it did good. It actually has flattened out a lot. It was, like, really buckly, but, um... It's calmed down quite a bit. Uh oh. I, th 
thought I could use my airbrush without having to clean it, but I think I'm going to have to do it quick. <laughs> yeah, he deserves, he could, he could have an electric motorcycle. Those have come a long way too. You know, I'm going to do, I was going to do black, but I'm going to do some Payne's gray. And then if I need to do a little bit darker, then I'll do some black. Let's see this first. That's one of the things about um, textured paper is when you use airbrush, the overspray is kind of nasty. It just brings out the, the paper texture too much. You know what? I'm going to try, I'm going to try a little bit of white airbrush. That's nice. <laughs> it's real sputtery. I don't know if that's picking up on the mic. <laughs> I might have overdone that just a little bit, but that's fun.
<laughs> That's the sound of my car. That would be very funny if my car made a a little air compressor noise. <laughs> no gas leak, Pippi. Whew. Do you mind the overspray texture less with the white? Um, yes, I do mind it less with the white. I don't know why. He looks like a happy skull because he got a shiny new coat on his suit. Yeah, he does have a very... He has a little bit, it went a little bit like um, hair metal, like an 80s hair metal album cover. <laughs> He's about to learn that he can't kiss the comic strips. All right, I'm gonna do some stars. And then I think I'm gonna call them done. It doesn't feel like a super finished piece, but um, it's a paper test. We'll see. Should have started on the other side. So my feeling about this paper right now is that it kind of works better when you just treat it as straight watercolor paper. Like, I think the, um, the ink lines worked okay. Um, not great, but okay. Um, yeah, but the, the, the watercolor worked works just amazingly on it. So if I was to make comics with this paper, I think I would have to mix up my my technique a little bit to lean a little bit heavier on the watercolor and less on my ink. Which like, I think with my work, I think the watercolor stands out a lot, but um, like that's the thing that people key in on, but the inking does so much of the work. It just sort of, my inking ends up feeling a little hidden. <laughs> the shininess of his suit is kind of cracking me up. Oh. <laughs> he 
He bought the suit from a mall kiosk. Definitely interested to hear the how the hot press treats you. Yeah, me too. It'll be, I think... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The, part of it is like, I'm just... my the, the mixed media paper that I use, I've been using it for so long, and it is so good. And I feel very comfortable with it. I just feel like there's... There's got to be something better. I just, but there may not be. There may be, like, the mixed media paper might be the best thing for, for the way I like to work. I don't know. <laughs> he did, this is like a Glamour Shots lens flare effect. Yeah, Kelly, that's a, definitely like a, it has a very 80s vibe to me. Thanks, Comic Stropes. <laughs> Fresh from the car wash look. All right, let's do the tape. <laughs> oh. Oh. It feels so nice. pretty good with the tape like there's a little bit of like interestingly interesting texture to it like it's I'm sure it's not gonna pick up on camera but there's just the tiniest bit of like like it's like the watercolor had a real crisp edge but then somehow the airbrush managed to get just the tiniest bit of overspray so it feels like there's a, a slight ghost around the edge it's very interesting. So one of the things that'll be interesting to see is how this cold press scans, because lots of times the texture of the paper gets picked up in the scanner and it, um, it can cause problems. Because it doesn't, pr like if it picks up the texture, it doesn't usually print very well. But then if you go through and try to white out all the texture, it on all the white bits, it's like, eh, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I think that my most popular video on YouTube, Comic Stropes, was a, a tape peeling, uh, what do they call them, a reel? And those are always big hits on Instagram, too. Thanks, Joseph. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Pippi. Yeah, so I'll scan this probably, yeah, I'll probably do it right after I shut down the, the stream. No, comic strips, this is just, um, just for the, for the paper test, really. But it is for sale. If anybody wants it, you can, um, hit me up on the old, uh, uh, on my website. And a lot of the, the pieces I have done for um, previous live streams are all at uh, Comics Cad Cadence Comic Art, my art dealer. So if you want something I did in the past, you can always go there and sign up. Uh, I'm glad you're back, dude. I've heard scanning it at a couple of rotations. You can cancel out some of the texture. I have heard that too, but I haven't tried it. This would be a very good, um, this would be a very good opportunity to try that. Well, depending on if it shows up or not, we'll see. Overall, good, good test of this paper. I'm, 
pretty impressed with it. I, this is, I actually like this way better than the Arches paper or the Arche. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I need to try doing more ink drawing on it and see how that uh, goes. Um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for tonight, everybody. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me. I had a good time tonight. Oh, yeah, Joseph is right. Definitely sign up for the Cadence Comic Arts newsletter. Um, I don't know if there's any more sales going on this year, but, um, you know, they usually have a really good Black Friday sale. Um, this year we had a Halloween sale for Harrow County pages. Um, that was really good. It's a, a great way to find out for when um, original art goes on sale. And, you know, most, uh, most of the original art is actually pretty reasonably priced from them. So if you, if you want anything, um, and not just me, there's a lot of great artists on there. All right. Thanks so much, guys, once again. Um, that's going to do it. I hope you all have a great weekend and um, have some nice fun and or relaxing stuff. And um, I'll see you next week. And make sure you tell the people that you love how much you love them. And I love all you guys. I'll see you next week. <laughs>